Hey everyone, Ariel Labs here with the blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. Don't forget to hit the bell to be notified of our upcoming videos. This is a review of a very special watch. This is the limited edition Tag Heuer Aqua Racer by Bamford. And this is a piece that surprised a lot of people with just how competent of a tool watch it is. Most people associate Bamford designs with lots of colors, whimsical materials, of course, having a lot of fun with classic watch designs. But for really the first time, Bamford has come up with a watch that if it didn't say Bamford, you wouldn't necessarily need to know it. It was just a very competent feeling tool watch. What do I mean by that? It's lightweight, it's legible, um, it looks like it could be used under a series of different conditions. As, as George himself said to me, he wanted this to be like the Land Rover Defender of watches in his collection that he can go out and get beat up a little bit and not have to worry about. And he, during the testing time for this, he did everything from hiking to surfing to driving to trekking. And that is how he sort of evaluated this. Now, some of the little design elements here, you'd really have to have been in his shoes, going to Tag Heuer and Le Chaux de Fond, understanding various elements from the museum. For example, there's a lot of hints on the dial that allude to some of Hoyer's classic stopwatches. There's a series of concentric black rings on the dial, for example, and some of the what they call the flag pattern here on the periphery, which is this black and orange color. These elements and textures, um, again, are, are highly reminiscent of certain types of stopwatches, which is a major part of Hoyer's history and something that a lot of their wristwatches, especially the chronographs, allude to. This is not a chronograph. Uh, it's just a three-hand uh, dive-style watch. But again, it's very interesting to see um, some connections to those classic timing instruments that Hoyer, now Tag Hoyer, used to make. Otherwise, the dial has some cool features on it. One of the things is the hour markers. They're actually milled solid pieces of luminous material. So rather than being painted on there, if you look very carefully, they are applied and they are raised up and they, and they glow uh, quite nicely. The hands themselves have a lot of luminant on there. You have these orange edged hour and minute hands and the seconds hand has a cool dark color to it as it moves around the dial, but just the edge of it is this alternating orange and white pattern, sort of against flag style pattern that goes back to the sort of heritage of racing that Hoyer is so much about. Bamford himself has an interesting relationship with Tag Hoyer. Um, he, in addition to making his own watches, was a Rolex modifier for many years, and then he stopped doing that and he started working with LVMH to do Bamford versions of certain iconic watches within the Zenith brand and, of course, Tag Heuer. And he's made a number of Heuer watches um, that had been produced by Tag, and they're, I'm sorry, they're really cool. Uh, the, the Tag Heuer uh, times Bamford Monaco watch, for example, in, in carbon, black carbon, was super cool. And he's done a few other ones, uh, an Octavia, for example, which was black and blue that was also very neat looking. And here you have one which is very different because what he really did, which I think was um, what excites me the most, is he took the Aqua Racer, which is a, a model in the current collection, it's their dive style watch, and he created an entirely new dial. And that's a big deal because he didn't just offer new colors to an existing collection, he really went in there and did something different. The case is 43 millimeters wide, but it's also in titanium. And not just titanium, but grade two sandblasted titanium. Right now, all of the Aqua Racer models that you can buy from Tag Heuer are steel. I think there might be a couple of two-tone ones, but as far as I know, they're, they're all steel watches. And so titanium isn't even available in the Aqua Racer collection outside of the special model. And the sandblasted finish makes it feel very industrial. It's also quite retro and reminds people of a lot of the early um, consumer titanium watches that came out in like the 1980s and things like that. And so I think that they did a really good job of completely changing the personality of the Aqua Racer by having this new dial, but also rendering it in lightweight titanium. And of course, compared to the steel Aqua Racer, this is a much lighter weight watch. It is wide at 43 millimeters, but it's not very thick. It's water resistant to 300 meters. Like the other Aqua Racer watches, it has a magnifier on the sapphire crystal over the date. Sapphire crystal, of course, AR coded. Um, nice rotating, unidirectionally rotating diver style bezel. I love the orange 
right there um, for the loom pip there. Again, of course, orange goes with the theme, but just a really nice dedication to making sure that all the details are right. I, I mused about this in the review, and it's not uncommon, of course, because other aqua racers have it, but you have this motif of the, the old diving helmet, right? The diver style, sort of the bell helmet here. And I find that ironic because the collection is called the Aqua Racer. And you associate this with things like jet skis and boating and all kinds of high performance activities that go fast in the water. And I think of this sort of old style diver walking around on the bottom of the sea floor, not doing anything which you might call racing. As you can see on the wrist, the 43 millimeter wide size is definitely on the uh, sizable but the lugs are relatively stubby, which means that you don't have too far of a lug to lug distance. And again, it is a watch that doesn't wear too high in the wrist. So I'm not saying it's a thin watch, but proportionally it feels uh, pretty thin. There's a push button deployant here on the clasp and there is, it's a, it's a basic one, but there is a small diver's extension here. It's the fold out diver's extension. Again, um, all done in the same nice sandblasted finish. So not, not the most remarkable of, of bracelets in terms of being modern, but works well, does the job, lightweight, and again, adds to the handsome look. So like I said, I had a chance to speak um, with George Bamford. We've known each other for a while, but we spoke specifically about this watch and he, worked, of course, in direct uh, relationship with Tag Heuer to design it. It's, it's not sort of uh, correct to say only he designed it. You know, Tag Heuer doesn't per se allow others to design watches. They design watches with others. And one of the stories that I think was so interesting that he told me was about the Bamford name on the dial. So we have Tag Heuer here under 12, and then above six where there would be some text is the Bamford name and also says Aqua Racer. And it was interesting because Tag Heuer wanted to make the Bamford name larger and George was like, no, 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 you, you need to make the, the name a little bit smaller. That's not sort of the point of the watch. Uh, you know, I should be on there, but it shouldn't be really big. And so it's interesting that Tag Heuer wanted this to look more like a fashionable collaboration watch, whereas Bamford himself was like, no, no, this is supposed to be more of a serious tool watch. You know, you don't need to emphasize my name as much because that's not the point of it. So there's lots of little fun stories about the design and the development of this watch. The Tag Heuer Aqua Racer times Bamford is a limited edition of 1,500 pieces. So it's not super uncommon, but it's definitely something which is going to, I think, sell out in short order. Just because when you get it, um, in addition to sort of the trendy hipness of being associated with this interesting personality in the luxury industry, George Bamford, it just is a very good watch and it will be discovered as such. And so I think that George himself really remarkably hit on what he wanted, which is to make a classic tool watch. Inside the watch is what Tag Heuer calls their Caliber 5 automatic movement. That's sort of a base Solita SW200 or Eta 2824. So um, a simple Swiss made automatic movement that is very reliable and workhorse. I know not everyone likes that term, but it is true. It is definitely a workhorse movement. The retail price is a little bit more, actually quite a bit more than the standard price of the steel Aqua Racer. But again, you have a different case, a different dial, and it's a limited edition collaboration project. So the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer times Bamford has a retail price of $3,000. $900, and you can see the full review on the blog to watch. Thanks.